7, a Live Golf podcast. My name is Sue Ann Hang, and with me is Jerry Fult. Just in case you're not familiar with who we are, uh, we're part of the broadcast team. Jerry is the analyst in the booth, and I am, the you know, just analyst. slogging away. On course analyst, steps. special events host, interviewer extraordinaire. Best friend to every player's wife and <laughs> it's girlfriend. A, it's not yes. true. When you lead in hugs, hug, uh, strokes gain hugging for any commentator I've ever met. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us. We're here in Miami. We're back here in Miami. It feels like we were just here yesterday. It's been five months, right? It's five months since Something we're like here that, yeah. for the yeah, team yeah, championship. Yeah. Uh, some great memories here. Yeah. Uh, last year, the Crushers won out here. That was quite quite a win. It was very cool. Yeah. It's a, um, it's a, it's a really cool resort. It's a neat place to be, and uh, and I think and a beast of a golf course. Yes, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. absolutely awesome. Um, all right, let's get into our picks for this week, picks. Uh, individual and team. Well, we'll start with you, Jer. Uh, I'm gonna win. No, oh, uh, who shit. are your picks, you idiot? John Rahm, and I'm going with the analytics. Our amazing team of champions, Data Duncan Carey, and of course with help of Mike Perkey, the team that is. On paper, supposed to win this week from analytics, fireballs. 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 Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going with Brooks, um, just f because I think this is a golf course that really suits him. Yeah. Uh, you really got to be strong off the tee here. Uh, you know, there's a major game. next week, right? Y yeah. You know how he does in majors, right? Well, we remember what he what happened in Orlando this time last year That's in true. Orlando. That's he true. won, yeah. and then he nearly won the Masters. So I'm, he's my pick this week. Should have. Well, maybe uh, not should have. Now Ron played great. Well, I think great. that that rain delay was just tricky, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Turned Kills out all right. Won the next one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and my team, Torque. 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 I mean, those guys have been playing so much golf. I mean. Yeah. All of them, they, uh, they've they been playing the International Series, they've been putting themselves out there, they've been playing some great golf, Joaquin, obviously, who's leading that team, playing They're phenomenal. All, all are familiar with very grainy Bermuda grass. So yes, yeah. exactly. Yep, yep, yep. So those are my picks for this week. By the way, exciting stuff. Very because exciting. Because we... <laughs> <laughs> you Whoa. look so excited. Well, well, our social channels. Exactly. We have social media now we're on launching. Fairway to Heaven. We're, we're big time. Launching. The kids think we're cool now. Upwards and onwards, yeah. all of our social What's channels. What's the handle, though? FTH underscore Live Golf. And we got some jazz. Cue the music. Cue the music. Cue the music <laughs> on the patio at the it, clubhouse. Uh, uh, FTH underscore Live Golf. Yes. Okay. FTH underscore Live Golf. And it's we are on, on the Twitter. The Twitter. Well, the X. The X. We are on Instagram. We're on TikTok, and we also have our very own YouTube channel. That's so, the coolest part. Um, I think the coolest part about this is now you can interact with us, and yeah. you can tell us what you want to ask the players. You can talk shit to us. You can give us crap. You can give us compliments. You can have a chat with us. All the above. That's the beauty about this whole yeah. uh, social channels, and so we get to have a chat with you too. Do we have access to it? Are we are we like administrators for this? We'll figure it out. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we'll figure it out. But yeah, so do subscribe and do like us. Um, now every week we do have special guests, very talented special guests that joins us this week and uh, join us every week, I should yeah. say. And uh, this week. Man, he is a guy who's an inspiration to many Australian golfers. Yes. He's one of the most loved golfers in the world. Yes. He's got a very decorated resume. He's your 2022 Open champion. He's had 12 professional wins. He's the captain of Ripper GC. He's the man who brought mullet back and made it cool. Unfortunately, he is yeah. exactly that. He's also living proof that good things do indeed happen to good people. Exactly, and he's the captain of Ripper GC, Cam Smith. Cam, the last time we were here in Miami, uh, I'm pretty sure we saw you walking out here with some home slippers, I believe. Mm. <laughs> you should have come out in a robe. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you had a cocktail in your hand and the slippers from the hotel room. <laughs> Out yeah. walking around with on Greg. the first tee, yeah, yeah you're on the first tee. Yeah, that was probably about right. Um, we got kicked out in the first round uh, last year against the Cliques, um, and I actually had my bachelor party the next week um, already organised. So yeah. the bachelor party kind of started a little bit early, and <laughs> um, yeah, we had a fun weekend. Uh, it's funny you talk about your bachelor party. I was talking to to Leash, I think when you guys lost, and he goes. 
man, I was really hoping we were going to win this thing because <laughs> I was hoping it was just going to be a three-day bachelor party, but now it's a six-day bachelor yeah. party. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a little bit like that. All, all my mates had flown in from Australia. They they had planned to watch the, most of the weekend um, as we were planning to play most of the weekend, but it didn't, didn't work out like that. Uh, we got, yeah, flipped on Friday and, um, yeah. So now, um, how much of your bachelor party can you tell us about? <laughs> I know you rented a place down in the Keys, like yeah. rented an island or something, and you had boats and, and yeah, we, uh, power sports. We, we got the boat down there. Um, I mean, it was, it, was pretty, it was pretty cool. Yeah, we had a big house to ourselves, um, played a bunch of cricket on the beach, a um, bunch of time out in the boat. Um, yeah, it was, it was fun. It was I epic. heard no <laughs> phones were allowed on that trip. Uh, yeah, there was, uh, I, it wasn't really a rule, I think they just didn't get touched for three or four days, everyone was pretty well behaved. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and how, many, how long did it take for you, and maybe the rest of your lads, to recover from that week? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a while. My, uh, my mates come over for this weekend, uh, we had the bachelor trip there for a, for a few days. Um, and then all of their wives and girlfriends also came over after that, so it was almost like an extended party after oh, wow. that as well. Oof. So it didn't really. <laughs> the, while the other boys were, were sleeping at home, um, yeah, I was uh, I was kind of still going there for a week or so after that. So it was it was fun. It was uh, it was a really cool time. Carrying the torch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of, of your bachelor party, fast forward, you got married in December. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. I think the last time I spoke to you, you did not have a ring on your finger, and this time you do have a ring on your finger. Uh, Chanel, I know she's here this week. Yeah. Uh, how did you guys meet? Because I know she's a chiropractor. Yeah. She's American. Yeah. So talk us through that love story. I call this segment, uh, and I get everyone to talk about their love story, <laughs> Fair Way to Love, Jerry. That's so funny. Oh, wow. That's, <laughs> That's a good so title. Yeah. Fair Way to Love. So um, <laughs> we, we met through some uh, mutual friends, actually. Um, uh, Chanel had just kind of come out of uh, her doctorate in chiropractic and um, for the first time in a long time uh, she was able to have a drink and, and actually relax so we went out um, yeah had a yeah I guess just met through some mutual friends and then just it was love at first sight really. Aww see that's <laughs> what I wanted that's exactly what I wanted. Love at first sight. Yeah. Uh, did you exactly. have any good chiropractic uh, pickup lines. <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. What, like what? I don't know. I mean, you tell me. I don't. I don't I'm not a guy. You crack me up, baby. You crack me up. No, <laughs> That's no I, did, I definitely didn't. Uh, Could you? I was fix too me? shy. No. You? Yeah, I was. I was. I was brutal. Are you a shy person? Um, I think when I'm like trying to meet someone and impress someone for the first time, I was pretty shy. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Did she know who you were? I mean, as uh, no, what you've which I loved. Yeah. Um, she kind of knew I was a golfer. I guess she didn't um, know, you know, what type of golfer. But um, yeah, she still doesn't know the game that well, and it, it cracks me Perfect. up. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. She's like, "Why'd you do that?" And I'm like, "Well, I'm really trying to do it." I, just did it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, talk talk us through kind of her influence on you and her role in your life and how that has impacted the way you are and even on the course and off the course. Yeah, um, I, I love Chanel's uh, work ethic. Uh, she's a really hard worker. Um, she studied hard uh, when I first met her. She, she just got out of that um, and then she went straight into work. She was working, you know, five or six days a week going here, there and everywhere over Jacksonville to, to meet new clients. and. Um, yeah, I, I really got uh, a lot out of that because I think uh, generally, um, particularly as a practicer, I'm a pretty lazy practicer and I think that kind of kicked me up the butt. Um, we kind of met uh, in, in the latter of 2021 um, and then 2022 had a great year, um, so I think there's a lot to, to kind of owe to her, mm -hmm. uh, particularly over that off season. Uh, while she was at work, I was trying to kind of match her work and um, 
yeah, it was. It's I impressive because I, I, I think we, we had a chat. I don't know if it was with you or one of the guys on the Ripper team. And we're talking about how many patients she sees a day mm. is ridiculous. Yeah. And how many adjustments she makes. Yeah. And I mean, chiropractic <laughs> is not a joke. I mean, it's it's a physical. And she's a small girl. And too. she's not. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. she's She's tiny. cracking big old guys' backs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Have well, you, she, have, well, go ahead. Have I what? I was going to say, have you allowed her to crack you? Yeah, absolutely. You? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Getting off the golf course. I'm like, oh, so yeah. she's still working? Yeah, um, she's kind of doing casual work at the moment. Cool. So she's just kind of, when the other doctors are on holiday, she'll come fill in. So Okay, I got to so talk to her able later. To, got a little neck issue she's, going on. She's able to come on uh, random weeks away, yeah. which is nice. Was she at the players when you won? You guys were just dating? Yeah. Then? Was she? Yeah, we were only dating then for about probably four or five months. Mm -hmm. yeah, so did she realize how big that was at the time? Um, I, I think so. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, you'd have to ask her that. But yeah. it, she, she grew up in Jacksonville and has kind of always gone to the players without even kind of knowing um, what it was all about. So <laughs> I don't know. That's brilliant. I love that. I mean, she's such a sweetheart. If you get to meet her, she's awesome. She's got to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Punching above your weight, Kim. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, now let's talk about the Olympics. Uh, yeah. I know that's you know the qualifiers is just about. You have three events, right? Basically the majors to get into Paris this mm -hmm. year. Now you got to play in Tokyo, and I heard in an interview somewhere about how much that meant to you mm -hmm. to be able to play for Australia. You mm -hmm. played with Leash. Uh, we'll talk about the uniforms maybe in just a little <laughs> bit. Uh, but how much does that mean to you? And, and what's your mindset? for the next three qualifiers? I mean, it, it's, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself um, by saying I have to go out there and do something. I think um, for myself, I've always kind of been a process type of person and um, I feel like if I do the work, the kind of the results will come. So um, just trying to do my own thing without kind of trying to think about it, I think is the best way to go about it. But um, it, it, it does kind of suck to um, I only have three events basically. Um, it's somewhere where I desperately want to be and um, I think being Australian and uh, you know we represent our country every week out here I feel like but there's something about wearing those coat of arms that's pretty special to everyone's hearts. So there's only a certain amount of people that get to do it and um, loved it in Japan. Um, it, was the, it was the COVID Olympics then so we didn't that's quite right. get the whole experience. I'd love to go there and go out and watch them track and field and, and watch them swimming or, or whatever's on really and um, support the Aussies. So yeah, I, def I definitely want to get back there. You did get to though, essentially represent your country playing in the President's Cup and the international team in, at home in Australia. Mm -hmm. Well, Royal Melbourne. Yeah. Um, and you played well. You did, yeah. what were you? One, one and one, beating Justin mm -hmm. Thomas in singles. What, that was, basically in my lifetime probably the biggest event to hit Australia even bigger than the previous President's Cup because of the Australians who were playing most yeah. notably you what was that atmosphere like from your experience uh, it was crazy we had a we had an awesome week that week um, it was uh, Ernie was our captain he was a great captain um, he kind of led us along the way and um, kind of almost had a we were playing under a new logo that week and a new badge that he created and um, I guess kind of um, because our, our record hadn't been that great I guess it gave everyone a, a fresh look on yeah. on what can, what the President's Cup can be and um, yeah it really gave us an, a nice little boost at the start of the week there and we came so close to winning it would have been awesome yeah. awesome to win. Yeah, I, I, you mentioned your process. Uh, I spoke to a few of the people on your team who have worked with you and work with you all the time and they say you're, you're very much a process person. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't really tell all your emotions from the outside, but yet you feel them mm -hmm. and yet you embrace them. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the hardest things to do, I think, when you're under pressure. How do you work on that? And what makes you so good in that situation? I think, I think first and foremost, being in the situation a lot um, definitely helps. Um, it's not. It's not an easy thing to do, particularly as a rookie trying to, you know, earn their card or, or whatever. And then all of a sudden you have a, a shot at a win. It's it's um, it's very difficult. I think 
being in those situations over time um, definitely helps and um, you just get better at handling those emotions and um, you know back to the process thing I think for me I've always I've always thought to myself that I've done the work enough to, to win rather than put, putting the pressure on myself to go out there and win I think um, it's always been a um, you know I've done the work I'm so prepared there's no reason why I can't win this uh, rather than I have to win this mm -hmm. um, yeah so I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff that I think about that is maybe a little bit different to, to what other guys do when you're tearing it up on the back nine of the open championship 2022 and just basically making everything it felt like <laughs> was that what you were telling yourself at the time that I'm ready for this yeah absolutely I I'd, I'd played well the start of that season um, I went through a bit a bit of, a little bit of a lull after the after the players win there and um, yeah, just had my team out just kept working hard and um, played well the weekend before that um, and I knew some good stuff was in the works and um, yeah just kept telling myself I'm, I'm ready um, I'd been close to a few majors um, before and um, yeah, there was no reason why I couldn't win one. I just had, kind of had to do it. It was such a biased crowd out there, though. I mean, they're great. They're great girl fans in the UK. Period. But it was such a biased crowd <laughs> for Rory. It was. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen anything quite like that actually. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, did you feed off that at all? They weren't rude to you, but I mean, they just the entire continent wanted Rory to win. Yeah, I don't think I. Uh... I didn't lean too much into it. I, I think it would have been easy to get caught up in that for sure. But um, you know, a thing I guess uh, St Andrews has going for it is the fairways are so wide there, so I was able to get over the other side of the fairway and um, kind of not listen to them. But um, yeah, it was it was uh, it was definitely something that was in my mind. But I just tried not to really get caught up in into it. Yeah. It was nice proving a couple of people wrong, though, in the crowd. Don't get me wrong. It's still, it's still <laughs> nice yeah. doing that. I yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Australia and, and, and the UK, you guys have some rivalries in so many different <laughs> sports. I mean, it's yeah. just that that banter and the back yeah. and forth is, you know, the competition is so, yeah. it's just so good. You yeah. know, um, you talked about, you know, we talked about your process and, and how you put yourself in that position all the time. And, but, I don't know, I don't care who you are. I think every golfer has that inner demon, that hurdle, <laughs> right? What's yours? My driver. <laughs> <laughs> His words. Yeah. yeah. Not that we say that occasionally on the broadcast. I guess that would be it. Um, it's, it's definitely not a club that I feel really uncomfortable with or, or anything like that. It's just a club that I've kind of always struggled to, to get right. It's lost me more tournaments than it's won me, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. And I, I feel like there's a lot of time where I have to kind of rely on that um, on the irons and the wedges um, and the putting to kind of even you know get a top 10 or a top 15 um, yeah so it, it can be tough at times and at times I want to pull my hair out and um, kind of start again with that club but I know uh, the work that we've that we've been doing uh, particularly this off season is the right stuff and um, I think I, I think we, we saw a glimpse of that in Hong Kong. Um, I think this week is, is a much harder test, and um, particularly with the driver. So um, it's good having a hard test heading into a, a big week like next week. Yeah. I've always contended that great putters are born, that a bad putter can learn to be a decent putter, maybe even a decent putter could be a good putter, but great putters are born. Um, Anthony Kim takes a dozen years away from the game, comes back, and in a week he's putting like yeah. Cam Smith, basically. <laughs> yeah. I, were you, I mean, you obviously are a lucky member of that club as well. Have you excelled with the putter ever since you can remember? I, I think I've always been a decent putter. Um, I, don't think I've all, I don't think I've always been uh, a great putter. It's definitely a, a, a club that I spent a lot of time on, probably more so than others. Um, so I'd like to think that there's that. It's weird, you, you see some people and they have the perfect stroke and they just can't seem to get it in the hole. I, I, I don't know, it's, uh, it's, it's a weird thing, but I, I do spend a lot of time on it and I think that's probably the biggest attribute to I think a lot of people want to know your secret. Yeah. I was just about yeah. to ask I want to know that. The like, what now, makes you so good with that flat My stick? So many of the people I've talked to throughout my time in the game, the greater putters always 
kind of seem surprised that they make the putts they make. That yeah. They're not trying to make putts, they're trying to hit good putts, whereas mm -hmm. the bad putters are always worried about the outcome, always trying to make it. Yeah. What is your thought process? What's your secret? I think that's, I think that's exactly it. I think, um, uh, you know, particularly from, from 10 footed in, I feel like I've always been a really good putter. And um, I think a lot of that is, is because I'm not worried about the outcome. I'm, I'm literally just trying to hit a good putt. Um, I read it. Um, I like to think I'm a good reader of greens and, um, and then just go up there and, and hit a good putt. There's for sure a lot of putts that surprise me in what they do. And um, I do miss a lot of putts that I hit good. and. Um, all of that stuff, but I think um, I think that process that I've got, um, you know, before hitting the ball is is really good and um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you do have a very interesting because I do get to watch you and I, you know it's a privilege to get to watch you <laughs> warm up and play and all that. But when I watch you warm up, you have a very interesting putting warm up routine. Your, your eye line thing that you have on the green is different from mm -hmm. most people. Mm -hmm. have a slight curve to it. I know your path is very, yeah. it's not a straight back, straight forward type path. Yeah. It's more of a U shape. Yeah, yeah. yeah, an arcing path. Um, but yeah, you're, you're definitely like a Houdini. I think you called him that. He is. Uh, yeah, you're a Houdini <laughs> with a putter. It's yeah. just every time you're 20 feet, inside 20 feet. Yeah. It's, it's like. It's, well, Houdini is a, was an escape artist, a magician. <laughs> he, he can escape around, I mean, he yeah. sometimes it's to drive a little offline. By his own admission, and he's in jail. <laughs> and the next yeah. thing you know, he, and you see that three or four times in a round, and you add it up, and it's 65. It's like, well, how the hell did he do that? I know. I, I, you know, we said this on the broadcast. You're one of those players, if not the best player. You might not have your best, right, yeah. from tee to green, but you make the most of mm -hmm. your round. I've never seen anyone like it. You could be you. last <laughs> in driving, almost last in uh, iron play. I think that was one of the events last year. You were last in those two stats, and you're at the top of the leaderboard. Do you ever think that? <laughs> like, I mean, honestly, like, has that ever occurred? Well, how do you? <laughs> what the hell? Can... You how? sucked no. at ball striking, like, and you were playing great. <laughs> Whoa, but look, when people watch it, it's like, look. I know, it is to... amazing. It's amazing. Is that just pure fight? Is that will? Yeah. What is it? I'm going to sound crazy here, but I think where I, where I grew up uh, in Queensland, is, uh, we're kind of the battlers of Australia, and I think that, that mindset is always kind of, um, stuck with me. We've always kind of been the underdogs and stuff. So um, yeah, I think the the willing the willingness to win and and yeah, just fighting out a a good round. Um, I've seen it too many times. I think uh, particularly as a young pro as well, where where someone starts off bad and they just kind of throw in the towel and yeah. mm -hmm. um, doesn't make for a good career. That so uh, yeah, earning every shot I think is is a really big thing for me. Yeah, I mean, I don't mean to highlight those things, but I, I, I'm coming from a perspective. <laughs> no, you're backtracking. No, but I'm coming from a perspective <laughs> of how awesome that is, because like you said, a lot of people, when you don't have your best from tee to green, it takes a lot of confidence out of your game. It oh, takes yeah, a lot yeah. of confidence mm. yeah. Yeah. mentally, you know? So how, to be able to then grind it's and so really much fight easier. through it. It's so much easier to throw in the towel, yeah. like you, so many players do. So many. But being able to grind through it. And in our format now, you can't throw in the towel. No. Nobody can. No. No, you can't. Uh, yeah. yeah, 54 holes. I mean, there's been plenty of times where you get off to a bit of a crappy start, at, at particularly on day one, and you look up and you're, you know, six or seven shots behind the lead already. And um, yeah, it, it is very, it's it's easy to do that, but it's something that um, I pride myself on not doing. So only uh, 39 rounds of stroke play for the entire season. Mm. Yeah. That, when, yeah. you, when you look at it like that, it puts it in perspective. Yeah. Every single shot matters so much yeah. more than the previous professional golf that everybody played. Yeah. Every single shot. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Jetta last year. Um, when you're in the run, running for the individual champion. Mm -hmm. When you looked up and you saw Taylor uh, on the yeah. final day, uh, what was going through your mind? Um, I mean, not not much really. He's He's a great player, and he was having a great season, and um, he was he was going to always going to be tough to beat. Um, yeah, it, it, it sucks for sure. I, I didn't like the feeling, but um, yeah, he he won. He beat yeah. me, so um, yeah, there's not much not much that I could have done about it other than playing better golf and um, 
like I said before, I, I think I prepared well. I did everything as best as I could and uh, just didn't work out. Let's go back to the players a little bit. I mean, that was a huge week. The players, I always, personally, I always look forward to watching as much as any tournament on TV in, a, in the previous life because it always had the best field in golf. It doesn't anymore, and that started 2023 when they not only you weren't invited back as defending champion. They took away your parking spot. Mm -hmm. They, uh, you live right down the road, and and it was so acrimonious. It seemed like, and, and and the field suffered. And this year, I mean, there were guys playing, but I didn't know still played golf, playing in the players, which I always considered the premier event. Um, how much would you like, with that tournament being so special to you, when things do eventually get settled between the two entities? Mm -hmm. How much would you look forward to going back to that specific event? Yeah, I would, I would, for sure, I would, I would put my hand up for that one. Any How bad did it week. hurt when, when the way you got treated? Um, I, I don't think it, I don't think it hurt um, as bad as what people think, thought yeah. it did. I, I kind of, um, I kind of knew that was going to happen. That was definitely one of the sacrifices that I had to make in, in coming over here, and I was willing to do that. So, um, yeah, I made my bed. I was happy to sleep in it, and um, there's definitely some tournaments out here now that. Um, that I love and I hope they don't go different places and um, yeah so it, it was uh, it was yeah it, it hurt a little bit but I think um, I was happy with my decision and I knew that's what was going to happen but um, by the same token if they gave me an invite to go there I would, I would definitely go back there and play. And you're playing down the road at the yard with a couple of with some buddies I, I got a picture from some of my buddies like Cam Smith defending champ playing the yard with us today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you talk about making your bed and making that decision. Uh, the time that you did, you would just name player after year. Mm -hmm. It won the Open Championship. You won the players. Talk us through that decision process and, and what was that final, I guess, selling point that made you decide to come over here? Um, I think for sure, um, you know the the business side of it was was something that was was massive mm -hmm. um i think the selling point for me though was knowing that we're going to have an off season um knowing that i can go back home see my family something that i hadn't that was one of my sacrifices in being a professional golfer um and to be able to get that back um and still play professional golf was pretty much a no-brainer for me yeah. um we just spent uh the last couple of years we spent about uh probably five months, six months at home, and um, yeah, that's uh, something money can't buy. And I guess it's uh, also being able to support, uh, you know, the events in Australia and going yeah. back and having time to go and play in those events yeah. must mean a lot to you as well. Yeah, that was, uh, it's something that I've always kind of done, but um, it was something that also sacrificed my career on the, on the PGA Tour, uh, was taking a couple of events off um, where I could have been in the U.S., so um yeah it was uh you know golf golf in australia is is something that's always been near and near and dear to me and um yeah to be able to support them support the juniors a little bit more um get back down there play one more time in adelaide um all that stuff was just adding up and um yeah i couldn't miss out on that opportunity what do you hear from the fans down there? They're rabid. The Ripper GC fans are absolutely rabid. I mean, they're just so <laughs> territorial and so proud of you guys. What are some of the great comments you hear from from strangers at your home in your homeland? Uh, I think there's just all the stuff that you hear from time to time. You know, up the Rippers, um, all that stuff. I know the boys loved it last year. Um, I think the Australian fans are so funny. I, I, I just laugh so much on the golf course. It, whether it's whether I want to give them the credit or not give them the credit, <laughs> I, sometimes I laugh under my breath and other times I'm, I'm laughing at them, but they say some of the craziest stuff um, and, and some stuff that is so witty as well that it just makes you laugh. Um, What's yeah. the funniest thing you've had, uh, you've heard from, from an Australian in the crowd? Uh, I got one last year actually, and I don't know, if you guys watch cricket? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, um, so I was fixing, a, I was fixing a, a pitch mark and I was kind of batting it down. I was standing over someone's line and it looked like I was kind of batting down a, a rough patch or something in the, in the pitch. Yeah. 
and I'm, I'm, batting, I'm batting it down and then someone goes, do you want Santa, Smitty? And I just lost it. I almost couldn't hit my putt. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it was just stuff like that. That's um, brilliant. Yeah, so good. Yeah. That was brilliant. That's cool. You know, I, I got to walk with you, I think, two of the three rounds in Adelaide last mm -hmm. year, and I remember interviewing you. I believe it's on the second or the third green. Uh, you were with Brooks. You played mm -hmm. with Brooksy. And there were just so many people that just surrounded mm. that green. And at one point, they were chanting your name. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I could see in your eyes that you were starting to get emotional. Yeah. Oh, you're going to make me emotional now. Yeah. It, that was, I felt, I felt that for yeah. me, you know, and I, I had goosebumps yeah. myself. Yeah, it's giving me goosebumps now. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's so cool. Um, yeah, to do what I love and, and do it good and um, make other people proud is, is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. But, but Australians have, I mean, it's my, it's my second favorite country in the world, uh, <laughs> next, to, next, to, next to my homeland, of course. When I went down there and played, I played the Australian tour for a season, I honestly, had I not just been recently married, I probably would have stayed. I loved it so much down there. Yeah. But what I think I love the most is the, is the collective personality of the population. Such a overwhelming, uh, self-deprecating sense of humor. Nobody takes themselves yeah. too serious. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody takes their life too serious. Nobody takes each other too serious. And the ones that do are basically just outcasts, just called yeah. wankers. And, yeah. you know, <laughs> get the hell out of here. Um, um, is that... There seems to be quite an element of that amongst Ripper GC as well, just that self-deprecating yeah. sense of humor. Not really oh, yeah. taking each we, other too serious. Oh, yeah. We we put so much shit on each other. If, if you were from the outside looking in, you would go, these guys absolutely hate each other. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're four of the best mates in, in the world. It's, it's, it's pretty funny. It's, um, it's definitely a, a sense of humor that you take elsewhere and, and people really kind of are, are set back. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, we try not to take it too serious out here, but, but at the same time, I think we're one of the hardest working teams out here, so it's, um, it's, it's pretty cool. I'll tell you what, it, it, just you saying that, I, I had the privilege of living in Australia, and I think I, I was there when I was pretty young. Yeah. And I think when I moved from Singapore to Australia, and then being in that environment where people just gave you shit all the time, Yeah. yeah. I uh, I harden up pretty quick, you know, uh, yeah. and, and now I give everyone <laughs> shit, as you know, yeah. right? And so it, I love that culture, and I love how loyal they are to to sport, you know, yeah. and whether it's a sporting team or a player or a tennis player or an F1 yeah. driver, uh, they're just all in. They, there's but, no halfway. No, for them, but they're there? so respectful, too. I mean, you can go anywhere in Australia and you get recognized basically by everybody. You're a national hero but they still respect your space. They don't come yeah. up and just demolish you as fans, yeah. do they? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's good. Um, yeah, the, it's, it's such a cool place. I, I love home so much. And, uh, you know, if, if I could, I would, I would be there every day of every year. But, um, yeah, the, the kind of profession that I've chosen has, has yeah. kind of taken that away from me. So, <laughs> um, but I love golf probably e equal as as I love Australia, so it's um, it's a tough one to toss up. Well, at least now you get to, to spend more time home, yep. so hopefully uh, that, that helps. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about your first win in Chicago back mm. in 2022. It was your second event at Live, and you, you beat uh, DJ, who had beaten you the week before that. Yeah. Uh, and then you, you beat Peter as well, Peter Uline. How different was that win compared to your other professional wins when you just being on live and winning in Chicago, beating DJ, how different was that compared to your uh, other wins? I, I think um, probably given the time that uh, that live golf was in, there was a lot of um, kind of hate, I guess, from, from the golfing community. And, uh, you know, you see those things or you hear those things about, oh, he's off to live golf, he's, you know, he's done or yeah. you know, whatever. Um, I think for me that was a massive proving point. I, I desperately wanted to do it in, in Boston, but um, couldn't quite get over the line. And, and then to go there and do it, um, I think was uh, really cool for me because just made people aware that, um, 
you know, I was, I was still here to win golf tournaments, whether it's here or there or wherever, it doesn't, didn't really matter. And um, it was nice to get that one off the chest so early and um, it, it would have been painful to leave it, you know, an off season and come back and do it, but um, it worked out. Yeah. Now, now we're relegated to just four times a year when most, not all, but most of the greatest players in the game, the biggest collection of great players are going to be playing against each other starting next week. Mm -hmm. um, your name is mentioned. There's a lot of favorites going in. You get, you get your respect as a guy <laughs> who can certainly walk away uh, victorious at Augusta. Um, do you think collectively, individually for you and collectively for the other guys with Liv, that there is more internal pressure because of what you just mentioned, because of the, it's a, it's a dying, I mean, it's the, yeah. the crescendo of hate, as you say, is, is certainly taken a much yeah. uh, a dramatic turn in the last six months. Yeah. Um, but it's still there. There's still plenty of, plenty of people who don't want to see Liv succeed. And you, yeah. you guys are playing almost for a common cause as well as individual pursuit as well, don't yeah. you think? Yeah, I think there's definitely a feeling of that. I don't think it's a feeling that we really talk about amongst ourselves. Um, I think everyone has their own uh, way and, and thought of, of dealing with that. And um, I think I think there is one kind of similar thing is that everyone wants to prove that you know they're still a great player and we can still win um, you know, all the tournaments, all the majors. Um, we saw it last year with Brooks. It was nice for Brooksy to take that one for the team. <laughs> um, yeah, so hopefully there's a, a bit of a trend here in, in the coming years where, where we can knock off a few and, um, yeah, it'd be nice. Well, you came in second at the Masters in 2020, uh, and I know you did a house tour I saw on YouTube, and you said you would have loved to much have, much have rather put on that green jacket, but you were mm -hmm. the first player, I think, in Masters history to shoot all four rounds in the 60s that mm -hmm. year. So that's, that's impressive that at Augusta is. National. How confident are you going into the Masters next week? You know, it's it's a place that I love so much. Um, and, and it truly is a place where I think I've played my best golf that I've ever played. And I just have been kind of pipped there at the line a few times. Um, I hit one in the water there on 12 that year, I think, that, that you're talking about. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think being so close so many times, it's, it is definitely one of those events where I, I want it so bad and um, probably an event where I, I do add pressure on myself to play well, but um, at the same time, uh, you know, I just need to keep doing the same stuff as what I have done in the past and mm. um, hopefully one of these coming years I can, I can get one if it's, if it's to be, it's to be. I'm not sure anybody's ever done a shoey in Butler Cabin before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that'd be happening. No, I don't think that'd be happening. <laughs> um, well, you just entered your 30s. Mm. Thanks. And <laughs> I'm just, I'm just keeping, I'm just keeping Cam humble today, aren't yeah, I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, uh -huh, grounded. Um, you already have a pretty decorated resume, um, but you're only just turned 30. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things you wish to achieve moving forward in your career? I think uh, probably number one is just keep getting better. Um, I think that takes a lot. I think that takes care of a lot of other um, kind of things that you want to tick off. Um, I'd love to get another major. Um, I think the the people that have won majors once is a really good list. Uh, the people that have won majors twice is a really good list. I think that I think that elevates you a little bit more. So to to get another one of those would be cool. Um, you know, I, I think for the live standpoint, I. I I'd love to be one of those guys when I retire that um, you look at a record and a win record or something like that, and um, you know the, the newbies out here have to try and chase that. That'd be that'd be pretty cool as well. Um, yeah, but you know, number one is just just keep getting better. Yeah. Well, plenty more. Like... I got tons more, but I think we're going to run out of time yeah. eventually, aren't we? Yeah. 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 He's already given us more than he than uh, they probably told him he had to. It's Cam. <laughs> it's Cam. Yeah, it's, we, Cam. It's, it's easy to take advantage of because he's so damn nice. I know, he uh, is so damn nice. He's so damn nice. All right, all right, well, what are you the most proud of in your career right now? I don't 
no. Uh, I think I think the Open Championship would be hard to go past. Mm. Um, I think uh, the fact that I haven't missed the Aussie Open or Aussie PGA is is also a pretty cool thing since I've been pro. So. Um, Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think uh, it, what makes me happy is, is giving back to, to young generations of, of Australian golfers, really. And um, yeah, I feel like I do that pretty good. So. Um, well, you do. Don't you have that initiative that you created? Yeah, I have, where you I have, have two the kids. scholarship. Yeah, yeah, the scholarship. Um, they're actually going to come out later this year. We haven't picked them yet. Uh, they're going to come out to a to a live tournament this year and kind of like Curry does home. with the yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we've been doing that now for probably five or six years. Obviously had a couple year break there with COVID, but um, yeah, that's that's really cool to give a couple of kids an opportunity to come over and really see what it's about and yeah, um, yeah and then get back home and, and play as much golf as I can. Uh, for those people who are listening and might not know what that scholarship program is about, can you just share really quickly in a nutshell what that is and how you select those two players and what do you do then when you do bring them over and what do they get to experience? Yeah, um, it's, it's just a couple of kids uh, basically that are really good at golf. Yeah. Um, we kind of, um, there's, there's, only, there's only two kids. Uh, they generally come out for an event, um, probably spend a week at home where we practice and, and hang out together. Um, and then just a little bit of funding to help them out with uh, whether it's coaching or, or physio or whatever they really need at home to make mm -hmm. themselves a better golfer. Um, you know, for me, uh, when I was a young professional coming over here, it was I felt it was always um, really difficult to kind of uh, even call or text someone because always, they always had a family or they, all, they were always doing something else. So I, I think the biggest thing for me is uh, when they do get over here and they do make it, um, just having someone to to lean on or, or call or um, just run, run anything off is uh, something that I would have really enjoyed. I think that person for me was probably Leash, but um, at the same time he had a young family so he was spending a lot of time with his kids, so um, yeah, that's it. Paul, what's the advice that you do give them when they do come over? Uh, I mean, golf advice, uh, I would say uh, all the kids now just love to see the ball go so far. So. Um, I'd say really hone in on the kind of 100 yards and in. Um, and uh, the, the kids are so good now, it's a, it's a joke. I mean, these kids are like 16, 17 that come over and they're so much better than me, it's it's crazy, so. Um, I, I don't know about so much better than you. No, it's crazy <laughs> how, how far they power hit the ball. Wise, power wise, it's a different, I mean, yeah. the, the 180 mile per hour ball speed is just like commonplace amongst yeah. Yeah. adolescents now, teenagers, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. nuts. Yeah, it, it's, it's crazy to see and, um, you know, for me, uh, selfishly, I probably learn a couple of things off them uh, from time to time too, so it's uh, Really, it's like awesome. what? Um, I, you know, just being a kid, um, I, I like to um, feel like when I'm playing my best golf, I play like I'm a kid. Um, hmm. They they play so freely and they just hit it at pins and I think a lot of that stuff is, is taken away from you when you're trying to make a career out of it and you, you're thinking about Making the, the external more. stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. So uh, yeah, I just love how freely they play, I think is, is the constant reminder for me anyway. The imagination wow. and, yeah. then, and, and creativity, and creativity yeah. around the greens, especially on the greens. Kids yeah. aren't afraid of missing a putt. Nah. Yeah. They, they're just absolutely not afraid of it. They don't know they can miss. No. Nah. Yeah. And it's just awesome. It's yeah. just awesome. So yeah, putting like a kid. You do putt like a kid. You do. Make <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He putts like Houdini. He still is a kid. <laughs> um, all right, Cam. We're gonna wrap it up here. I did something with Jonesy uh, when we had him on the podcast. It's called mm. uh, a quick five or this or that. Um, Australian edition. Okay. Uh -oh. uh, so you just, I give you two options. I have options. not seen these. I have not approved them. Uh, I give you two options. You pick this or that. It's really, really Easy. simple. I've got five All of right. them for you. Here we go. Royal Queensland or Royal Melbourne? Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, I knew that uh, Royal, one would get Royal you. Queensland is a place where I'm a member at, and I've been a member at for, for a long time. So, but Royal Melbourne's so good. I'd, it, Royal Melbourne. 
Adorable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. To oh, the, I get a couple of height texts. Yeah, now. Apologies to the frizzy people. <laughs> All right, meat pie or bangers and mash? Meat pie. Oh, really? Yeah. Really traditional one or like ones with mushroom and cheese or? Um, I'm like a big pepper steak guy. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's hard Ketchup to go past. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, bees knees or Guinness? Bee's knees in the summertime for sure, Guinness in the wintertime. What is bee's knees? It's just cocktail. So oh. no, it's gin. Yeah, it's gin, honey lemon and lemon. And, mm, oh. Yeah, so good. Gotcha. Yeah. Everything that a bee would love. Um, okay, should we at the Masters or <laughs> drinking out of the claret jug? I think uh, drinking out of the claret jug is, is a pretty, <laughs> pretty special thing to do. How many beers were in there? How many is it fit? Yeah. Two, exactly. Two beers? Yeah. That's, That's it. it. 24 yeah. ounces. I think claret is like some type of wine. Yeah. So seven, it's 750 mil. So like a normal yeah. wine bottle fits in there. A liquor bottle fits in there. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I wonder what that claret jug smelled like after he returned it. Yeah, we had to wash it a few times. <laughs> oh, like Australia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Finally, Fisher or Diplo? Fisher. Every day of the week. Sorry, Diplo. He's pretty Unless good you do too. it like this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Last year, that I love was that. that was brilliant. You do it shooting <laughs> with him. <laughs> that just flew right over his no head. No idea what you're talking about. I, mean, I know he's a fisherman. <laughs> Fisher's awesome. What, what is your handicap fishing? If you were to equate it to golf. Oh, there? geez. I don't know. You'd have to ask the people that fish with me. Um, you scratch fisher. You. Uh, you, have, you have I'm definitely not a plus handicap. Not a plus handicap. Nah. Gotcha. Um, I'm decent enough. What about as a boat captain? Pretty good at that. Uh, I haven't hit anything yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's a plus handicap. All right, Cam, thank you so much. We appreciate your thank time. You, man. And uh, man, I tell you what, you're an inspiration to so many people in Australia, not just Australia, but around the world. I know you inspired me as well. So thank we you. look forward to watching you this week. And uh, and certainly watching you next week at the Masters as well. Yeah. So Thanks. good appreciate luck, it. play well, well and uh, go Rippers. Thank you. Up the rippers. <laughs> Up the rippers. Whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs>
to replicate that. Oh yeah, be the second Australian yeah. ever win it. That'd be phenomenal. Yeah, that'd be phenomenal. Anyway, um, as we said at the top of the show, really exciting. We have launched our social channels. Okay. FTH underscore live golf. FTH underscore live golf. We're on the X, we're on the Instagram, we're on the TikTok, and we also have our very own YouTube channel. Are we on Facebook? I don't know about Facebook. MySpace? MySpace? MySpace. MySpace? LinkedIn? LinkedIn? Are we on LinkedIn? I don't know if we're on LinkedIn, <laughs> uh, but we're definitely on those large um, social channels. Not that LinkedIn's not LinkedIn's I think not we're large, on Facebook too. Anyway, but the, the Twitter, you can find me on. I'll respond to a lot of your comments on there. The rest, you're on your own with her, because yeah. I don't even know what TikTok <laughs> is. Um, yeah. But uh, l like I said, uh, do interact with us. Do leave us, DM us, message us, leave us comments. Yeah. Like, subscribe, like, and subscribe, please, if you love the podcast. And if you wish to catch this uh, on video, you can catch it on our very own YouTube channel. That's awesome. How about that? Yeah. Um, now, do subscribe again. I'm going to keep saying it till. Do uh, subscribe. Do subscribe. Do, do say it again. Which one do you no. just subscribe to? That's just the YouTube, right? You subscribe to the YouTube. You subscribe to YouTube. You us. follow on the Twitter. Yeah. And is it, you follow on the Instagram? On the Instagram, yep. And, and then you the follow on the TikTok. Tic Tac Toe, yep. yep. Gotcha. Yep. We'll get this down at some point. No, uh, no, 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 no. But anyways, you can find us wherever you find your podcast, whether it's on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get your podcast, you can find us. Have a listen, and hopefully you like it as much as we do and you enjoy it as much as we do. For now, we're we got, go. I think it's Aretha Franklin or Lena I Horne think Aretha's playing trying to get loudly. us out of yeah, here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, have a great week, Jerry. I think you it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. It's yeah. going to be great weather here in Miami. Tune in.